Ooh, what you printing? Hey, Mackie. I'm actually printing out a tiny Macintosh SC30. It's a project I found on Instructables.com. A tiny SC30? That's so cool. Can I play games on it? You can, Mackie. Using the power of a Raspberry Pi Zero and a 2.8 inch LCD display, you're able to play all the games and applications that you want. And it's in color. So, uh, if I, you know, wanted to make one too, how would I do that? You know, for games and stuff. Let's hop back in the lab and show you, and you, how to make one yourself. A few weeks ago, when I was in the Macchiac chat room, someone posted a link to a one-third scale Macintosh Plus model by C. Genco. I really wanted to combine my crafting, 3D printing, and my Mac nerd skills together for this one awesome project. Huh, you said the instructions are for Macintosh Plus, but you're printing an SC30, right? Were those instructions on the website too? Well, I modified the original model, which was a Macintosh Plus, into an SE30, because I wanted to make a mini version of you. A mini computer? That's awesome! I can go around town with you now. See all the movies, go to the park. Making my way downtown, walking fast, faces fast. <laughs> all right, Mackie, I think that's enough singing for today. Let's go ahead and start showing everyone how to make a mini SE30 for themselves. First, let's see what materials we need. We'll need a Raspberry Pi Zero W or Raspberry Pi Zero. I'm using a W since it has built-in wireless and built-in Bluetooth. Also, a key part of this build is this tiny 2.8 inch display, which is meant for Raspberry Pis. This is built by a company called iUniker. The 3D model STL file is sized specifically for this screen, so make sure you get this one, which is linked in the description or linked on the Thingiverse website. We will also need a set of M3 bolts and nuts to keep the case together. And the short female-to-female -female IDE cable that will allow us to connect the screen to the Raspberry Pi. Also, I use my CR10 3D printer than any old 3D printer should do. If you don't have a 3D printer, you can probably use the Shapeways service to have them print one for you for a small fee. I'll be using some off-white PLA to try and replicate the color of the SE30. Okay, so the first thing I did was start modifying the 3D model and make it look like an SE30. Ooh, it kinda looks like me, but in 3D, you know, more 3D. Luckily, the creator of this Instructables project, C. Jenko, posted the SketchUp file to the page as well. Anyone who wants to modify the STL can easily do this by downloading the file. While I am no expert at SketchUp, I was able to nudge this amazingly designed model into something that more resembled an SE30. I added fins to the bottom and to the side of the back case. I moved the disk drive down since the SE30 has a lower set disk drive than Macintosh Plus, and I added the five horizontal slats that go along the front faceplate of the SE30. Neato Toledo, it's all coming together. Once I got it looking the way I wanted, I exported the model and sent it over to my slicer software called Cura. The process of slicing is when software translates the 3D model into a format called G code. This file tells everything that the 3D printer needs to know, from how hot to heat up the nozzle, to where to move along any dimension, and how fast to squeeze out the filament. Wow, this is a lot of learning for the weekend, but I'm riveted. The base model was designed to be printed in several pieces. The front face, the back shell, the fake floppy disk, and the toggle, which acts as a rotatable clip to hold down the Raspberry Pi. I know I said this before, but C. Genko made a very well-designed model. Since this model is relatively complex, I'm using the tree support option on Cura to automatically build a breakaway sacrificial scaffolding. So now that we have all the parameters set in Cura, let's go ahead and send it to the printer. Miss Fox, I think the print is done, but uh, he doesn't look so good. I think he's sick. Oh yay, it's done. Don't worry, Mackie. It's not sick. These are just the tree supports, even though it kind of does look like it got sick right here out of the disk drive. 
These will easily break away and it'll leave us with a nice clean faceplate for our 3D model. Woof! I was worried for a second. Let's put them together. Next, I used some 150 grit sandpaper to sand away at the small ridges and imperfections that you can see on the layer lines of the final 3D print. We're gonna make this mini mag perfect. So once you're finished sanding, go ahead and rinse your pieces in the sink and make sure you get all the dust off that you can. Ooh, time for a bath. Next, we'll need three M3 hex nuts. We're gonna be placing them inside these holes on the shell of the case right here and also right here on the bottom. And this will be used for the retaining clip for the Raspberry Pi. These two here will be used to hold on the front face plate. Maybe it was just my printer settings, but I could not fit the hex nuts into the shell, at least not without damaging the model. To make life a little easier, I used a wide tip on my soldering iron and heated it up to about 350 degrees Celsius. I warmed up the hex nuts until I melted the PLA around it as I pressed the nuts into the shell. If your printer is more accurate than mine, you should be able to snap the nuts in place by tightening the bolt from the opposite side. You should try that before you resort to melting things. Just like that old saying goes, measure twice, melt once. Okay, so now that the shell is basically complete, let's go ahead and start working on the software portion of this project. Oh yeah, pie time. I'm using the standard Raspberry Pi OS on a 16 gigabyte micro SD card. To get this, head over to raspberrypi.org and use the Raspberry Pi download tool. Using the tool, you can install the Raspberry Pi OS directly to your SD card. Once you flash your card, go ahead and pop it into your Raspberry Pi. You'll need to connect a keyboard, a mouse, and a mini HDMI cable for this initial setup. Connect your Raspberry Pi Zero to a micro USB power source. Be sure to use the port closest to the ribbon cable edge because this one is power and this one is for USB. Once everything boots, let's do a little housekeeping to keep our Raspberry Pi secure. To do this, you'll want to change the default administrator password and enable SSH. Once you're in the Raspberry Pi desktop, go to the top menu, click on the little berry icon at the top then go down to Preferences, Raspberry Pi Configuration. Here you should change your host name to something cool, like Baby Mac or Apple Pie. Go ahead and click the big Change Password button at the top and create a new secure password. Hmm, what should we do to make a good password then? Ideally, you'd want something that's easy to remember, but hard to guess, and probably over 15 characters long. Okay, make it. Mackie is cool. Three, the Hashtag. <sighs> I don't think that's too secure, Mackie. How about something more random, like... Ooh, that's a good one too. All right, to set up SSH, just go to the Interfaces tab and enable SSH. What the do? SSH, or Secure Shell Protocol, allows you to connect to your Raspberry Pi from a remote PC. This will help us transfer files and run commands remotely via the terminal on our modern Mac. Ooh, that's fancy. Once you've enabled SSH and changed your password, go ahead and reboot your Pi. The next steps are all about setting up the Mini VMAC emulator. Mr. Genko provided a pre-compiled Mini VMAC executable that can run on the ARM processor of the Raspberry Pi. There's two executables that he provided. One runs at the native resolution of the LCD screen of 640 by 480, and that's a little hard to read, so he provided another executable that runs everything magnified at 2x. So we'll also need a Macintosh 2 ROM image. I put a link below where you can grab the ROM image from Macintosh Garden yourself. And remember, only use ROMs and software from Macintoshes you legally own. Don't copy that floppy. Also, I used the disk image I found on archive.org that already has system 7.5.5 along with some other useful software. 
Download this from the link in the description and save it to your machine as disk1.dsk. Wow, this is a lot easier than I thought it would be. To transfer all your files to your Pi, you can use the CyberDuck program on Mac OS to create a SSH file transfer connection. In CyberDuck, go ahead and click on the little plus button to add a connection. In the connection type drop-down menu, click SFTP and enter the IP or host name of your Raspberry Pi. This is where I'll use the host name of my machine, which is babymac.local. Next, go over to the folder slash home slash pi slash desktop and create a new folder. In this case, we'll call it mini vmac. Go ahead and copy your mini vmac arm executables, your disk1.dsk image, and your Macintosh 2 ROM file. At this point, you would want to rename the ROM file to mac2.rom. Okay, I'm transferring the ROM over right now. Good job, Cyberduck. So at this point, we can double click on the mini vmac arm executable and run it. A happy Mac! It's working! That's awesome! Thankfully, the original pre-compiled binaries provided to us on the Instructables page give us a ready-to-go Macintosh emulator configured to act like a Macintosh 2. One last thing we need to do before putting the Pi inside of our case is to install the drivers for the LCD display. To do this, we type the following commands in your terminal on the Raspberry Pi. These commands can also be found on the Instructables page. Okay, so now that we have all the software running, can we put it in the case now? We sure can, Mackie. Let's get it all set up. Okay, first let's do a test fit of the screen into the 3D printed face. In my case, things were a little tight when I tried to slide the screen into the case. But this is easily fixed with a little bit of 150 grit sandpaper. Once things are sanded down, we can easily slide the screen in. Make sure the pin sides are on the top, though. Ta-da! It's all coming together. What's next? Let's go ahead and install the Pi Zero into the Mac case. First, install the retaining clip by running an M3 bolt through the top of the clip and through the case to the bottom. You may have to use some force to get things in there, but afterwards it should tighten up well. The instructions recommended using an Allen wrench, but I found using this bendy tool worked pretty well. Once the retaining clip is in place, go ahead and slide in your Pi Zero board. Make sure you take out the SD card in this step, or else things won't fit properly. Make sure all the ports are properly aligned and twist the bolt to turn the retaining clip and hold the Pi in place. I realized that my retaining clip wasn't sitting tight enough to hold the Pi in place when I inserted the USB cables. So I went ahead and used a small drop of craft glue on the clip. Now we should be ready to close up the model. Hold on a sec, you forgot the ribbon cable. You're gonna need that if you want a screen. That's right. Thanks for reminding me. I almost forgot the most important part. We need to connect the female to female 40 pin ribbon cable from the back of the display to the header on the Raspberry Pi. One small issue I ran into was that the cable was too tall to close the screen all the way. This was simply fixed by using a screwdriver to pry up on the plastic tension bracket that holds down the ribbon. So before we tighten down the faceplate, I added a small piece of black gaffer's tape right here to cover up the hole where the floppy disk would go. And I didn't print out a fake floppy disk that was provided in the original Instructables model, just because I like the clean look of having no disk inserted. So I just added this little piece of black tape here. You can probably use electrical tape and it'll show through as like an empty disk drive. So now let's go ahead and get some M3 bolts and tighten down the face to the body. Be sure to fold the ribbon cable down so that it doesn't get pinched when you're closing the face. And all right, we should be done now. Hmm, it does seem to be missing something. There, I put a little SE30 label on there. Now it's even more realistic. 
Oh, it's perfect. Now I have a perfect one-third scale model, Mini SE30. Sure, the screen is tiny, but it's mainly a desk toy. It's not really meant to be a productive, full-fledged machine. So let's go ahead and show you what some games look like. Here's Prince of Persia. And Oh No More Lemmings. They're so tiny. And Pear Arena by John C. Calhoun. Like I said, this makes a great desk toy. And it makes for a great portable me. Maggie, how did you get over there so fast? Ha ha ha, Well, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed our little build of our mini Macintosh SC30. Check out the original Instructables link in the description for more detailed information on how to make your own mini Macintosh. I hope you try and build one for yourself. Bye everybody, see you next time. Bye everybody.